forgive my terrible diagram, I am definitely not an artist. Uh, ideally, these are going to be smooth, even curves. <laughs> 60 cycles per second in the U.S. Uh, 60 hertz power. Um, whether you want to call it 110 or 120, unless you're an electrician or an electrical engineer, it's not going to matter. It's really whether you're measuring peak or whether you're measuring the root mean square or the true average as though it were DC power. But essentially what we have in most homes, almost every home, unless it's a commercial uh, power setup, you've got two phase power. So that means you've got 120 volts on one side and it alternates around the neutral and 120 volts on the second phase alternating around the neutral. For your air conditioner, um, electric dryer, stove, electric water heater, if you have electric versus gas, you draw across the two and because they're 180 degrees out of sync with each other, out of phase, uh, the distance peak to peak across is 240 or often called 220. So that gives you that power. Now what can happen if you draw too heavily on one leg and you suck this voltage down on the first phase to say a true 110 at peak. And of course my drawing's terrible. Um, <laughs> you're probably not going to disrupt the phase but you're going to see your peak change and actually we'd come up at the same point because our phase hasn't changed. But the idea here is that you have put so much load on this one leg that you've actually pulled the power down. Well, why is this a big deal? It's not like a, a light's going to be that much dimmer at a slightly reduced voltage. Um, maybe a motor on my table saw turns a little slower. Um, probably in the general scheme of things not that big a deal. But at the transformer, that big round object at the pole or the power company steps down power and brings to your house, these two must sum up to zero when they meet the neutral at the transformer. So if you drop this one to 110 by your heavy induced load, this one now becomes 130. Where that's a problem is any device on this other phase that can't handle that increased voltage uh, is going to be damaged. Now is it going to be immediate? Well it depends on how far out of balance you get this. At 130 volts maybe not immediate but over time definitely. Uh, if you drop this lower and this one grows even higher uh, you could get into the point of, of an almost instantaneous uh, level of damage. For sensitive electronics such as my computer I've got uh, most of those on and ups. Um, which also does power conditioning. At 130 volts, I, depending on, I've got a couple different brands and they're lower end, you know, consumer, small office grade. They may buck that power and switch to battery. Long term, this is a bad idea. So, in thinking about this, if we're all doing um, garage workshop type stuff, most of my tools are 110. That is a limitation of both cost for most of my tools because when you step up to 220 or 240 volt tools, uh, obviously it's generally a larger class of tool and it's more expensive, it's larger, takes up more space. And I'm not a professional, I don't do that for a living, so I don't necessarily have that need most of the time. I definitely have a want for it. Um, the other issue is wiring. Um, I am in an older house that has limited uh, expansion in the current panel, so that limits my ability somewhat to run 220 uh, to where I want it, or as much as I would want. So when I'm looking for outlets in the garage, um, I know if I run the table saw on 110 and the large dust collector on 110, those are pretty heavy draws. And if I put those two on the same breaker, uh, I'm probably going to flip that breaker. So I'm going to have multiple breakers on each phase. It would look just the same down here. And I could put a table saw on this breaker and the dust collector on this breaker. And I could have my friend over running the belt sander on an outlet on a different breaker. And from all appearances, everything's fine because I haven't exceeded the, the load, uh, the amp load, for any one of those breakers. So there's no indication to me the breaker doesn't trip. I don't know that I have a problem or that I'm creating a problem. But if I say, let's say... 
12 amps for the table saw and the dust collector is another 10 and mm, let's say instead of the belt sander um, we're doing the joiner there's another let's call it 10 amps now that's a pretty heavy load on that one phase um, I have 200 amp service which is pretty common in most newer houses in the uh, US so at some point somebody has upgraded this one it probably wasn't 200 originally so I'm drawing 32 amps off of one side so each leg is 100 amps a little over 30 percent of the rated load probably not going to be too bad of an issue um, but what if my refrigerator is also over here and let's say that's another 10 amps and now the wife's in the bathroom and she's got curling iron and let's call that 5 amps. So it's not just what I'm running with the tools, but it's also any other load in the house. Now, something sensitive here such as the deep freeze is on a breaker on this other phase. And since I've put so much load on this phase, I've sucked the voltage of this phase down and since these must sum, I know this one has increased. And when that deep freeze kicks on, it's now exposed to higher power. Is it 130 volts? Is it more? Uh, you could start all these devices up, put your load on it, and then take your voltmeter and test. That uh, would be about the only way that you're going to find out exactly what that is. You could probably work out mathematically what you think it might be. Uh, but there's going to be so many variables there. Uh, line loss, if you're running any extension cords, a loose connection that could induce change there that that's not going to fit what the formula says it should be. So really testing is going to be the only way to find out. So what I'd really like to do here in the garage, I have six different outlets and I'm sure some of them are on the same breaker, but I'm sure that some of them are probably on different breakers. Now if they're on different breakers on the same phase, it's not doing me any good. What I'd like to do is identify one or two outlets up here and one or two outlets down here on the second phase and there's a couple of ways you can do that depending on your knowledge level comfort level one thing you always want to do anytime dealing with electricity be extra careful if you have any questions concerns call somebody who knows a little more is a little more comfortable even if it means hiring someone uh, don't take any risk that uh, you're not comfortable with or don't have the knowledge to take. Ideally, when identifying which circuits or which breakers are on which phase, uh, most common in most panels is they alternate. So this is phase one, phase two, phase one, phase two, and so on down the line. So I could flip off a breaker uh, if somebody hasn't already mapped out which uh, outlets are on which breaker. And I can take a voltage detector or a meter and go check. And unless you really care to know which one's phase one and phase two, as long as you know that these two breakers are on different phases and that you have outlets in your shop area that are on those two phases, then you can draw across both with your tools. Uh, if you don't know or if you have questions, because there are some variations on panels, if you're comfortable, you could pop this off, uh, but that is a live circuit back there, um, both phases. So if you come across both of them, that's 220 volts. So that's maybe not the best idea uh, for the average person. So I got to thinking of an easy way without touching this um, to identify different phases. And of course, if they're on different phases, then they're going to have to be uh, on different breakers, except in the case of your 220 volt breakers, which cross both phases. So for any of your 110 outlets, if you identify that outlet one and outlet two are on different phases. That also means they're on different breakers. So I'm a big fan of these non-contact voltage testers uh, or voltage detectors. Because um, all we have to do is that. We aren't probing. There's no risk of shock. Uh, but it certainly works well enough to take a voltmeter. Uh, but it can be a little bit difficult, and you may not be able to see the screen because of my lack of lighting over here. It can be difficult to get your probes in contact in an outlet. There we see 122.3 volts. So by using either method here, you can tell if an outlet's on a given breaker. You go flip that breaker off or have a helper do it for you and then test. Uh, so that'll answer that question. But what it won't tell you is which phase this outlet is on in relation to another outlet in your room or in your shop. Unless you can really tell inside the panel um, how the phase buses split out in there. So back here in the garage I have 
this first chord that I've labeled 1, and we'll just call this phase 1 for my own reference, I have it plugged into an outlet on the west wall, and I know that's on breaker 7 in the box from prior testing. Uh, what I don't know is where that puts me in relation to an outlet on the south wall over here. So if we were to take our same meter, and of course it's not really uh, necessary with this cord because it does have LEDs, but I can come in here and if I can make enough contact, I've got 122.3 volts. So, no doubt we have power. Now what we know for the 110 or 120 outlets is this is your black wire, that's your hot wire, your actual power wire, and the white wire is your neutral at zero volts. So actually voltage is at 120 and then at a negative 120 as it cycles through. The small connector in the in an outlet or an extension cord, and you can see your black wire there, is the hot one. And so when we measure, we're measuring hot or power in to neutral. So 120 volts from here to here. If we remember back to how we get 220 at home, there are two different phases, 180 degrees out of sync with each other. The difference across them instead of pulling from 120 to neutral on this one, we actually pull positive 120 to negative 120, so across the two phases. So knowing that, and knowing that my small conductor is uh, my hot wire, the voltage difference from hot to hot will give me 240 if these are on separate phases. If they're on the same phase, that's going to be zero. They're both going to start here, in sync with each other, and it's going to cycle through. If one's here and the second one's here, I'm going to have 240 between them. So this is going to be very difficult to hold the meter and both cords and wiggle them enough. So I want to be really careful here to not touch uh, the end of that probe. What do I see across here? If that shows up, let's see if we can rotate that. I've got 246.4 volts, so that would tell me definitively that these two outlets are in fact, without knowing anything about my panel, on different phases. So that means that if I plug one tool into the outlet this is connected to, and another tool into the outlet this is connected to, I'm not going to have to worry about pulling down a single phase too low. It's definitely not a good idea to run anything of a heavy load, uh, not just power tools, but anything else on an extension cord and especially not for any distance. There are actually charts uh, rated for wire size and distance, uh, but one thing I know about this cord, this is a very heavy cord, and this one obviously is not, um, I don't know, maybe running a lamp or a fan, but not any power tools on it. So I only have this one plugged in for testing purposes to bring the outlet here to me, if you will. In a nutshell, you don't have to know anything about the panel um, or be familiar with the inner workings of a panel if you use this method. Be extra careful um, using a probe of any sort in an outlet. Uh, if you're not comfortable doing that, uh, you know, please don't. But your smaller connector is your hot wire, and that is true whether it's the outlet in the wall, uh, assuming you're properly wired. And <laughs> just there are a few of those that are miswired, and for most appliances it's not probably going to hurt, but still, you don't want phase and neutral reversed. Um, call somebody to fix that. But if you measure from small conductor to small conductor and you get zero, they're on the same phase. If you get 240-ish, they're on different phases.